when we come in as the Roger Federer Foundation, we come in to in, in improve the quality really that the kids have a better education really and better chances later on in life and we do the same for maybe for teachers it's very important to have the right partners and also the communities need to we all need to work very closely together because then we can achieve a whole lot more are you planning to have more projects in south not just south africa just wider africa you've got ethiopia as well right we have about uh, nine projects we support uh, you know about six uh, different countries uh, in all over africa um, two of them are in uh, southern Africa and three of them are in Switzerland. So it's uh, obviously very exciting. We're celebrating our 10-year anniversary at the end of the year. And uh, personally, I love you know, putting in the work as well. I love thinking about it, what more we can do, how much more kids can we help. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. For me, it's really just about giving kids opportunities. And our foundation touches probably the lives of 50,000 kids at the moment. And obviously... You want to just try to increase as much as possible, but you need long-term planning. So we have pl you know, plans for the next three years, and then we'll just go along you know, as we speak. Tennis, okay. start of a new season. Do you still get the same buzz after all these years? I, I guess I get excited, but I've never been like, okay, this is the start of the year. Oh my God, you know, I can't believe it. But uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's been a uh, very gr a good year for me last year with the Olympics and... The, the victory at, uh, at, at Wimbledon, getting back to world number one. So obviously I'm looking forward to hopefully living some of those great moments again. I'm working hard, I'm training hard, but at the same time I also make sure I have enough rest, enough family time, because at my stage of my career I need to make sure the balance is right. When you look at all the things you've done, do you have anything left on your to-do list? I, I never actually had a to-do list. You know, <laughs> It's really the media who talks about, okay, yeah. he needs to achieve these things, he's yeah. so close, so uh, you should aim for it. Of course, I guess at one point when I was close to the, you know, the all-time Grand Slam record or the all-time weeks at world number one, I mean, I was one week away and eventually one slam away. Of course, you've got to push for trying to beat that, but I never really adjusted my schedule accordingly to try to achieve it because I knew if I play well, records will fall along the way. And uh, still I have the hunger, you know, sort of the urge to try to achieve more because I really, truly love this sport. Um, I think that's what's the easiest part for me is the motivational mm -hmm. part, even though I get a lot of uh, questions asked, how do you do it? Yeah. But for me, it's pretty simple, you know, how <laughs> I wake up in the morning, I'm excited to be a tennis player. If someone said to you, what would you choose, more Grand Slam titles or number one ranking, what would you say? Probably at this stage of my career, probably titles, Grand Slam titles, if, you, if you'd like. Um, even though last year, you know, to get back to world number one or staying there is, is incredible. Uh, but I think it's really the first time you get there that it's uh, it, you, you kind of match that up with any other moment maybe in your career because it's such a big thing becoming world number one I feel but so at this point I guess it's really titles I've won a lot and I still feel if I keep on playing the way I am I can still achieve a bit more so I guess it's titles now.